Recently, I've been kind of talking with a lot of beginner Shopify developers, people that want to start freelancing or they're looking for a job. If you're new to this channel, this isn't the type of video that I usually do, but I have about six or seven years of experience as a freelancer, specifically on Shopify websites. So I thought I would help you out with some easy tasks that you can use to get started. All right, so the first place to find ideas for services or features you can build is this YouTube channel. I'm not saying this for some self-promotion. You realize this, each one of my videos are things that clients have asked me to build. It's not like one-off things that people have asked for. It's, it's, people, it's things that people have asked several times. That's how I know that it's a popular enough topic for a video. And I don't do keyword research or anything like that. All of my videos are ideas that I got from jobs that I actually did. They're also all quite easy because half of this channel is developers, half of this channel is Shopify store owners. So it's like really easy beginner level features. So particularly if your development skills are at that beginner level, then you can build all of these features that are on my YouTube. Literally just, just go and build all of those things on your development store on Dawn theme. And you will already have like a portfolio and a bunch of experience in the most common things that people ask for. Okay, so that's like the easiest level, my channel and obviously other channels as well. Any tutorials, good channel is um, Coding with Jan. Uh, a lot of you probably follow that one. Basically coding tutorials, but not coding tutorials like introduction to Shopify Liquid or something like that. But I would recommend building specific features, okay? Coding tutorials for building features on Shopify. The Shopify ecosystem has a bit of a problem. If you haven't noticed yet, is the fact that to do almost anything beyond what your theme can do, beyond what your theme settings allow, you will need to install an app. Okay, and that's pretty annoying because apps cost money. Apps can slow down your store if they're like apps on the front end. And you end up with like, I mean, if you've got a complex store, you can end up with like 20 apps or more. Yeah, that's just not very good. A lot of store owners are not very happy with that. So a lot of my videos are actually things that can replace apps. And um, a lot of my work as a freelancer were things that replace apps. A lot of store owners don't know that they can hire a developer to build the same thing as an app, and they'll just be unhappily using an app for months or years and paying that app monthly, which they don't want to do. But if you can offer them that same feature, but for a one time payment, then they will gladly accept. Okay, so um, just browsing the App Store can be a good source of inspiration for services that you can offer. So I'm going to click on browse all apps. And I'm going to go maybe filter by apps that are for store design. Let's take a look what's going on here. So easy FAQ page, you can build a way you can build a template on Shopify stores for people to do like these collapsible FAQ drop downs, right with a toggle, a terms and conditions checkbox, that's definitely something that I've been asked to build. So that you know, people have to click the uh, checkbox before they can add to cart or before they can proceed to the checkout free shipping bar, anything that's related to like announcement bars right at the top, that's really easy to build trust badges, trust badges are basically just just a grid of like icons, right? What do they do here? Okay, so they add these icons at the bottom of the cart page. So you're just editing cart.liquid, adding a little block here and some theme settings so that people can upload small images like this um, underneath the proceed to checkout button. That's super easy. Just browse through the app store and you'll find plenty of things that you can easily build, right? Front end things. Front end apps can always be replaced. Back end apps, of course, that's a lot more difficult. All right, moving on. So the next thing is actually one particular app that I want to talk about. It's called vitals all in one marketing. And this is like, I don't know what they say, like 40 apps in the one app. And they're just they're all just little features like this, a client can just install one app instead of like 40 different apps. And they have things like product reviews, um, you know, upsells and all of that recently viewed or related products like the thing that I'm building actually that looks almost exactly the same, right? But what would store owners rather do? Pay $30 a month? Or maybe pay you or me one time 
to build something completely custom for them. So yeah, I definitely recommend checking out Vitals app and then seeing what from here you can build easily using front end code onto your theme, onto your development store, and then you'll have something for your portfolio. So let's let's go through this actually in a bit more detail and I'll tell you what exactly I would try building. Shipping information, okay? There's like, there's many ways that you can display extra information on the product page and it's just up to your creativity or rather, you know, what kind of inspiration you can find on other sites. Announcement bars, I've spoken about that earlier when talking about apps, that's super easy. Payment logos, that's super easy. Trust seals and badges. As you can see, there are plenty of things that you can do that just involve showing a grid of images on the product page or uh, creating a section that can be used anywhere. Pop-ups, stock level. So I actually have a tutorial for showing the stock level on the product page. And by the way, I actually have like a whole playlist called Shopify without apps, right? And these are all things that apps do that you can actually do without apps. One of those things is contact forms. So you should learn how to edit the contact form uh, because the contact form in Shopify can be used for a lot of things. There are various stores like wholesale stores, for example, that need a wholesale application form. There are also forms for like custom products for stores that sell custom products. And they usually have to install some kind of app for that, right? But you can actually build them a contact form just by duplicating Shopify's contact form, adding some fields to it. And then you have a second contact form that works natively in Shopify instead of using an app. Okay, so we've talked about apps. Now let's talk about themes. Themes will have different kinds of features, especially Dawn, like the basic, the free themes, they don't have many features and a lot of people are using them actually. They're the most popular themes and yet they're lacking many features that other themes have. So let's take a look at broadcast actually. This is one of my favorite themes. Here's a feature that I really like, the logo list section. Dawn doesn't have a logo list section like this and it, it's so simple. Again, it goes back to the idea of a grid of icons or images, which uh, I talked about before for trust badges and for payment icons. Well, here's a logo list section and it's like the same thing. All you need to be able to do is build a grid with images or icons, right? And you can add a logo, right? And then you can choose the logo image the width. One of my favorite features about this theme is actually this pop-ups block, this pop-up section actually, that is on every page. And they give you the ability by adding blocks to actually have different kinds of pop-ups. And many themes don't have a built-in pop-up at all. Um, so this can be something that's really useful, I think. And again, we, we talked about the GDPR cookie consent thing. Well, cookie consent is built into this theme but it's not built into other themes, which forces people to use apps, or you can offer your service. So my recommendation here with uh, finding inspiration from themes is basically this, get really familiar with Dawn and with all the free Shopify 2.0 themes, but they're all basically Dawn with different design. And then once you know off the top of your head, all the sections that are available in Dawn, you will be looking at other themes and you'll be like, oh, that's cool. That's a section that's not available in Dawn. And then you'll start thinking, okay, how can I build this onto Dawn? And that will be another service that you can offer as well. And another thing that you can build and feature in your portfolio. Now there's one particular theme that people talk about a lot on YouTube, for example, on Instagram, influencers always talk about this theme, Debutify, because, because it offers good affiliate payments. <laughs> um, that's the real reason. But anyway, Debutify kind of offers like a lot of features. Right, so um, it's kind of like a mix of the Vitals app, but built into a theme, which is like a good idea. So they have a collection of 57 boosters. All those things we talked about in Vitals app, a lot of these are built into day boost. So age check, that's a pop-up basically, that doesn't allow you to enter the store. Um, that's a really good idea for something to build. The agree to terms checkbox I talked about before when we were looking at apps. Yeah, of course, there's also cart upsells. There's the add to cart button on collection pages that allows you to quickly add something to the cart without going into the actual product. Color swatches. Of course, Dawn theme does not have color swatches and that's a pretty easy thing to set up. There's already tutorials online. Uh, I believe a channel called Weekly How has a tutorial on color swatches in Dawn theme. 
So, okay, I, I'm not going to go through all of these, but you get the idea. Go through these, consider each one of these, and then try to brainstorm maybe different variations of them and how you can build that onto Dawn theme and onto various other themes. And I'm obviously repeating myself by now. I just thought of a bonus tip while editing this video, hence the change of wardrobe and also it's a different day. But I just thought that if you're a beginner, you might have watched through this video and it still seems quite intimidating to build a lot of these features and you're not really sure where to begin, particularly if your skills in HTML, CSS or Liquid aren't that good. Obviously you need to continue advancing those skills but there's still a way for you to start freelancing without being really good at coding. And that is by using page builders. My advice is for you to become an expert in page builders, to specialize in page builders for this beginning stage of your freelance career while you still improve your coding skills. And if you're not familiar with page builders, they're basically apps that you install into your Shopify store and they give you a drag and drop interface for building custom pages without using code. And they're not really intended for web developers, they're more for store owners, for designers and stuff like that, or they initially were. But now they've gotten quite advanced. Over the years, features keep being added to page builder apps and now they actually require some skill and knowledge to use not as much as coding, but more than your average store owner has. So I've actually been hired to do web development using page builders. And that was an okay job. It was kind of chill as a beginner. That would be just the perfect job. But anyway, because you're a web developer or a beginner web developer, you already know more than enough to be using page builders, you're going to find them quite easy to master. And if you're offering your services as an expert in this very specific niche of using page builders, then that's quite a strong offering that increases your chances of being hired. And it also offers a very gentle start to your freelance career. Yeah, the last thing I want to mention is the comments on my channel, right? Because I post coding tutorials and not only on my channel, but on other coding tutorial channels. Look at this question. Could I do something similar to this to create specific descriptions, possibly in a collapsible tab determined by which variant is selected? So she's got basically different product descriptions for her variants because they have different scents, ingredients, etc. And so build that, build that and put that in your portfolio, make a tutorial on it, make a blog post, make a YouTube video and people will find you. That's a great segue into the next part of this video, which is where to actually get clients or how to find your first jobs. This is a big topic, so I'm only going to scratch the surface in this video. I'm not a fan of like cold reach out or anything. I'm not going to tell you, oh, go like email random people. I hate that. Anyway, look, what I would recommend is this. Once you know what kind of services you can offer, you want to actually let people know that you can do that. And the way to do that is to put that information out there on the internet to share what you actually made, what you, what you built. Obviously, like social media is good for this. Um, if you're not big on social media, the thing that I recommend is actually blogging. You might have seen my website ed.codes for all the tutorials that I do videos for. I also write a text tutorial for it. And so when people are Googling something like how to show the variant SKU number on product pages, they will find this tutorial. You don't have to make a YouTube video for it. If you simply write out the tutorial, like some basic instructions and the code, Chances are most people are kind of, they'd rather just pay you to do it. So they're going to contact you. So like at the end of your blog post, you could have a contact form saying, do you want me to do this for you? Well, here, contact me, you know, and this is actually very effective. If you're thinking that it's hard to be found on Google as a blogger, that's because everybody's having like travel blogs or something. If you're blogging on specific topics like this, that that's so niche that you will probably be matching the exact keywords that people are looking for how to show variant SKU number on product pages in dawn theme, like you have a very high chance of being on page one of Google for that you, you have a very high chance of your article being the only article on the internet that actually covers that topic. 
Okay, so don't don't doubt yourself really. Like you can start a blog, like a coding blog and actually be very easily found and a lot of people could be contacting you. The next thing that I am not sure if I should like recommend, but I'll tell you about my experience and that is Fiverr. I actually started freelancing on Fiverr. That's where I got my first gigs and that's where I found my first clients. A lot of people really hate these types of websites. They think that it drives prices down. I disagree. I think that it's really easy to stand out on these kinds of websites when you offer something that's actually a quality and professional service. My account is closed now, so I can't show you that anymore. My account was closed by my fault. Basically, um, I had multiple Fiverr accounts, which is against their terms of service. So that's my bad. So I'm not sure if I would recommend like building your entire business around Fiverr because they can just close your account like that and you got no business anymore. But that was a great place for me to start because all of those clients that I had on Fiverr, they just started reaching out to me via email and not going through Fiverr anymore. So that, that's where I got my first clients and that's where I got my first experience. Now, the other really unique thing about Fiverr is that it's not like Upwork where people look for a developer. It's actually the other way around here. You offer your gigs, right? What are your gigs? They're the services you offer and they're like specifically packaged and priced, right? So all of these things that I've been talking about in this video, you can package these into a specific service, give it a specific price, and then resell that many times and you'll be able to copy and paste your code on a lot of these jobs and not actually do the whole code again. So that's what I like about Fiverr. That's like kind of the reverse of the usual like job marketplace where people are looking for other people. Here, people are actually browsing for services and you can have a portfolio of services that you provide. But there may be other websites like Fiverr that actually are based on services. I just haven't heard of them. All right, so that's it. That's the end of the video. And I realized that it still leaves a lot of things unanswered and you might be finding it hard to take action right now, but I'm ready to elaborate and to answer your questions in further videos. So like I said, this isn't the typical kind of video that I do, but if you want me to do more talking videos like this, more career oriented videos, please let me know in the comments. This is kind of interesting to me and I'd like to continue that. So leave your questions in the comments. Let me know what you'd like me to talk about. Good luck with your first freelancing jobs and I'll see you in the next video.